Greetings, dear friends. My, it's been good to be with you all this week. And if there's some of you that are listening to our broadcast and you didn't get something or you didn't understand something, if you just go over on our web pages to our archives and our audio sound program sheet or whatever it is, you'll find all of these messages I have preached for the last two or three weeks. All of all five of them together, and you can study them and learn from them. I trust that you learn from them. I trust that I'm reaching somebody that is interested in growing up in Christ. You see, you had Christ in you ever since you were saved. You had him. Religion denied you the knowledge of that Christ. That day is over. Religion can no longer do that. There are voices like mine set around this world. Around this world, there are voices that are no longer going to take religion as an answer. They're going to tell you that Christ lives in you because this book teaches that and says that. So I come to you today with that overcoming message. He that is birthed by God overcomes the world, John says. What a glorious truth that is. Take your Bible, if you will, and turn to the first chapter of Galatians, and I'm going to... Uh, Pick up again at the 12th verse. It's such an important verse. I don't want to go by it without saying the things I ought to say about the 12th verse of Galatians chapter 1. He says, For I neither received it of men, neither did I, was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ. You understand what that means? <coughs> Excuse me. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 1 and 17, I'm praying for you that you'll have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Let's just separate some words out of that one little verse. Revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That means that the knowledge of Christ doesn't come by human effort. It doesn't come by Bible schools or colleges or seminaries. It doesn't come by old age. Uh, I had a dear friend who died some time ago, but he lived to an old age. And you know what? He published Bibles. He published Bibles because he had a great amount of words to give us. And those things he gave have helped me many times. But you know what? He never had a revelation of Jesus Christ as his life. Precious man, he'll be in heaven. Maybe we'll talk about it there. But dear friends, I can't wait till you get to heaven to talk about things. Because you're God's last effort. You're God's last voice. You're God's last container possessing Christ just before the rapture. When the rapture takes place, this is all over. Everything I'm talking about is over. We'll go to heaven, and there we will have the explanation and the understanding of what God did on this earth to a perfect point, maybe. Maybe some will still be dull of hearing, and it'll take time, even in heaven. But people are going to be studying this word. This is the eternal word. You know that? <clears throat> this is the eternal word. So we'll be studying the Word in heaven. Maybe some of the same things I keep repeating on this broadcast again and again are going to be studied in heaven till we get it, till we understand it. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the way you know who Jesus Christ is. There are churches called Church of Jesus Christ. This is the Church of Jesus Christ. This is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We're the people of Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean they know anything about Him. I'm waiting for them to say, Have you a revelation of Him? The people they talk to or they ask, Have you had a revelation of Jesus Christ? Because Christ is not up there just for you. He's not down under. He's right in you. Christ lives in you now. That's the Jesus you need to know. That's what you get a revelation of. That's what we're coming to in these scriptures. We'll get to it 
in another day or so, but I'm coming to that. Verse 12 reads, For I neither received it a man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. For have you heard of my conversation in time past, my daily walk in the Jews' religion? How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it? <clears throat> the Apostle Paul has hit on something that affects our day in the preaching of the gospel. He's, he's, getting, he's getting an answer to the point he's making. He's saying, you, do you know, do you, do you understand my past? that I felt led of God to destroy believers that followed the Lord Jesus Christ. I started out that way, and I, in fact, was on, my, on the road to Damascus to do that to wherever I was going when God knocked me down, struck me blind, and hollered out of heaven at me. And he said, since that time, I have been led by the revelation for he said, I studied the Old Testament. I knew what was in it. But I didn't know any more. And so for me to get the more that was necessary, the more that I needed, I got it by revelation. I got it by revelation. That's what he's saying here. Came to me by revelation. You knew that in the past I was a bad man. How did I get changed? It came by revelation of what I was to do with my life, how I was to be used of God. He took the meanest man on earth and formed him into a model of grace. Do you see it? He says, many equals of my own. many equals of my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous and of the tradition of my father. What was he interested in? He was interested in being something nationally to Israel. I think he wanted to be on the 70 board member of Sanhedrin. That was the highest board you could get on, political, religious, and the whole bit. I think that's what he wanted, and he'd get noted by that by persecuting people who followed Jesus. And he said, you've heard about that. I'm not going to give you the next verse for that will come in the next broadcast because that's the most important and we'll get to it and talk about it. But he says, I was out persecuting people when God arrested me, brought me under his control and told me what I was to do. He said, you've heard me talk about my past very little. For well, that was a man in the flesh. Not even I was to remain in the flesh. I was in the flesh. But my message now is to talk about Jesus. I started this point by simply telling you that there are some things preachers won't believe today because of their past. For instance, preachers who have said time and again, I had a great revelation of this Old Testament truth. I had a great revelation of what happened to Noah here. And a great revelation of what happened to David. You know what? They're afraid they'll have to go back on their word. Their word. They'll have to go back on what they preach that's something they preached and they have molded themselves to be an image of that preaching. Let me tell you, when you get saved, your past is gone. When you get saved, your past is gone. What do preachers do who got saved and for years and years, maybe 50 years, still preach their old line of message? Because they have enough 
pride. That pride gets in the way of them saying, Folks, I used to preach these things, but I can preach them no more. For I have had a Christ revealed to me that lives in me, and I cannot preach these same things anymore. Think about it. Well, my time is gone once again. I just seem to get started with you, and I have to leave you, but that's why it's so important that you stick with me. You're going to hear the whole gospel. You're going to hear the message that God gave to Paul. You're going to hear the gospel that he gave to the church. Remember, this is the only gospel he ever gave to the church. The church has messed up themselves again and again by taking parts of other gospels that didn't belong to them. And that's why some churches are not really led of God, not really what God intended that they be, because they have the wrong gospel. I'm not saying that I'm the only one that has this gospel, but I am saying I'll go to the place where that gospel is and I'll preach that gospel to you as best I know how. I'll not mix it with something else. I'll give it to you like it is. Like it says in the book. Blessed King James Version. I stick with that because that's the only version that points all these things out because preachers who didn't want to give up their past have Bibles now that glorify their past. They changed the word here and there. They changed the line here and there. Or they put a scripture out altogether and saying it's not for us. So you can't just tell what's happened. But you can read the old King James and find that it bears the message that God wants us to have today. So think about it. I'll be back with you on Monday with a new message. But in the meantime, you can have any one of these messages I brought this past week off of going to our archive page in the computer. Try it and see. Love you. Thank God you listen. Let it change your life. It's worth it. Until next time, God love you.